men of Galilee, who gaze in wonder at the heavens. This Jesus, whom you saw ascending into heaven, will return as you saw him go. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended this day to the heavens, may in spirit dwell already in heavenly realms, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, I welcome you to Ascension Thursday. Today is Ascension Thursday. New heaven be given to Christ newly crowned, who back to his heaven a new way hath found. God's blessedness sharing before us he goes. What mansions preparing, what endless repose. His glory still praising on Fry's holy ground. The apostles stood gazing, his mother around. With hearts that beat faster, with eyes full of love, they watched while their master ascended above. No star can disclose him, the bright angel said. Eternity knows him, your conquering head. Those high habitations, he lives not again. Till judging all nations, on earth he shall reign. Yes, dearly beloved in Christ, my name once again is Reverend Father Emem Omoren of the Catholic Diocese of Hikorikwene. And I bring to you thoughts in reflection on this very important day, Ascension Thursday. Today the church brings to mind that day, that very significant day as we heard in that song. When Jesus went back to his place, physically was seen going back to his place by the right hand of the Father. When the apostles really felt they had lost him, and you can imagine, we are told, the mother of God was there. His mother was around. The apostles stood gazing. With hearts that beat faster, with eyes full of love, they watched while their master ascended above. Today, the church brings to mind what happened on that first Ascension Thursday. And dearly beloved in Christ, the celebration today is not just to tell us Jesus ascended into heaven. Well, we begin with that. It is to tell us that after some time, that Jesus, after his resurrection, went back to the Father. But above all, today's resurrection, today's celebration, sorry, is to tell us that um, we have not lost him. Honestly. He went back. He is up there. But we have not lost him. It's to tell us that the apostles did not lose him. It's to tell us that the ascension did not mean Mary lost her son. And therefore, if the apostles did not lose Jesus, if Mary did not lose her son, we today who celebrate ascension must believe that we have not lost Jesus. That Jesus, we, we must not think that Jesus has gone away from us. He is still very much around. But therefore, what does ascension mean? Ascension therefore means that it was necessary for the church to grow and that the church would grow when the Spirit comes and the, the, the Son gets back to the Father. The Spirit comes and therefore the working of the Spirit will be complete. Working of the church will be complete. It was necessary that um, everything returned to normalcy in quotes after the Son had come down to die for us. Ascension means that um, God's plan took place. God's plan came to be, came to pass. Ascension means that um, we have one who has gone to the place that he can stay there and from there, not only intercede, but send us all help and bless us from there. Therefore, dearly beloved in Christ, 
Today we are supposed to be happy. We've been given a new name. And I want us to think about this new name. In the first reading of today, we've been given a new name. The writer of the Acts of the Apostles addresses his audience. And we are that audience today. He has given us a new name. And that new name is Theophilus. Again, Theophilus. Let's not, for, let's not forget that um, ascension is to tell us, hey, you are important. Ascension is to tell us, let me go and prepare. Ascension is to tell us, let me go and keep things in place for you. Ascension is to tell us, let me go and send you help. And therefore, who does that? Who sends help? Except one who loves. And today, by inspiration, the first reading tells us that we can claim a name, Theophilus. Yes, you are Theophilus. I am Theophilus. If you are a girl, you are Theophila. I am Theophilus as a man. But all of us can claim that name today. My name today must be Theophilus. What does Theophilus mean? And first of all, you know, I'm getting this from the first reading. When um, the, uh, the writer of the book of the Acts of the Apostles says, um, In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. He's addressing us. If you're reading this reading today, you are the Theophilus. Theophilus from two Greek words, Theos and Philos. Theos, of course, means God. Philos, friend. So if you're Theophilus, as I am Theophilus, I am a friend of God, you are a friend of God. That's what we are. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Ascension reminds us today that we have a friend in Jesus. That's why the, um, the writer of the Acts of the Apostles, St. Luke, says, I address you, Theophilus. I remind you of all that happened. And we talk about this person from the first day, how he presented himself and how he was killed, how he died, and for 40 days, and speaking of the kingdom of God, and while staying with us, he charged us not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise. You see, he talks, the writer of the book of the Acts of the Apostles talks to us as the friends of God. Ascension reminds me that I am a Theophilus. Ascension should remind you that you are a Theophilus. You are a friend of God. Ophanabasi. And because you are Ophanabasi, you have a stake. You have a stake. And because you are a fanabasi, we have not lost him. Because you are a friend of God, we have not lost our friend. That is what the first reading is saying. As they were looking on, he was lifted up. Our friend was lifted up. And today, a lot of things have come to be manifest. So that we have come to know that he needed to go up to send the Holy Spirit. He needed to go up to prepare a place for us. So nobody should feel bad about ascension. Ascension means... We have a friend here, we have a friend there before God. I am a Theophilus, and you are a Theophilus. Dearly beloved in Christ, look at the second reading. The second reading tries to present the situation of the ascension as a beneficial situation and says, He made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places. Our friend, our master, our Lord has a place that will benefit us. So brethren, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the sense, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe, according to the working of the great might which he accomplished in Christ when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Dearly beloved in Christ, we have not lost Jesus. We have not lost our master. We have not lost our friend. 
Ascension is only telling us that our friend has taken up a position that will benefit us. You come now to the gospel. Because it's not enough to be a Theophilus. There is something associated with that. And that is exactly what I want to share with you as the theme of this reflection. Come to the gospel. We are told Jesus came to the mountain. The, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some hesitated. Some hesitated. The, the, the Greek word there is not really some doubted as if they did not believe, but it was that some hesitated. And that's why they really beloved in Christ. Today we still have people who hesitate. We still have people who doubt. We still have people who complain. We still have people like Thomas. We still have people like Judas. We still have people who want to see before they believe. We still have people like these disciples who even after seeing Jesus face to face, they may have believed in him, but they hesitated. Dearly beloved in Christ, stop the doubt. Stop the doubt. If you're a Christian, why are you doubting? Are you doubting that God is not real? Or are you doubting that God is real? Why are you doubting? What are you doubting? Are you doubting that God is real? Are you doubting that he can do everything? Up till today, there are some of us, even up to ascension, who are doubting the resurrection. There could be some of us who are doubting the ascension. And what will be the next thing? You'll be doubting, you'll be doubting the, the Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit. So dearly beloved in Christ, I remind you of your status. I remind you of your new name. You are a Theophilus. Stop the doubt. If you, a Theophilus, are doubting, who would believe? If the disciples who were with Jesus and they saw what happened to Judas and Judas ran away, they were now 11 and the 11 of them went to the mountain. If these 11 could go to the mountain and worship God and they saw Jesus after the resurrection and some still doubted. Okay, let's not use the word doubted. Some still hesitated. That's human nature. And today, as we celebrate ascension, let us believe. It is real. It's real that Jesus died. It's real that he rose from the dead. It's real that at a, at, at a point in time, he went back to the Father. It is real, as we will commemorate in a few days' time, that when he went back to the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved in Christ, you are a Theophilus. Stop doubting. You are a Theophilus. Stop doubting. If you're a friend, you're supposed to know your friend. If you're a friend of God, you're supposed to know your God. If you're a friend of God, you're not supposed to doubt. You're not supposed to hesitate. And first of all, what, what was the hesitation for? Worship. Worship. And they may not have hesitated in the sense of, um, you know, I'm not going to worship him. He doesn't merit my worship. But it may have been something like, wow, this man, could it be real? Could it be real that he's back to life? Could it be real? No matter the extent of the hesitation or the doubt, all I'm saying is, as a friend of God, we are the ones who are to be, to be in the forefront to make sure we propagate the message of the resurrection. Stop doubting. Almost 40 days now. Almost 40 days now. You're still doubting? You don't believe in the resurrection? You don't believe in the ascension? You don't believe in the Pentecost? Come on. You're a friend of God. You're a Theophilus. Stop doubting. This passage from the gospel reading of today, Matthew chapter 28, 16 to 20, is very important that the disciples went, but they were still doubting. It happens today that some of us here, highly placed in church, that some of us today, highly placed in the society, that some of us highly placed even on the sanctuary, maybe you're not doubting, but who still hesitate? A few things about the doctrine of the church, you're like, could it be true? Uh, could it be true that baptism washes away sin? Uh, you, you, have, uh, you have accepted, but you're still hesitating, you're still doubting. Could it be true that um, the Eucharist is the real presence? Could it be true? We keep asking this question. Dearly beloved in Christ, you are a Theophilus. You are Theophilus. You are a friend of God. Stop doubting. And the only reason I'm saying stop doubting, even without having to verify, is because God is involved. God is involved. And when God is involved, 
He is true to his nature. He is true by every standard and he cannot deceive. Therefore, if we are dealing with God, stop doubting. And as a friend of God, stop doubting. You come back to what is happening today in our society. When you don't believe in somebody, when you have some doubts, it is difficult for you to follow that person and follow his program. Whatever happened on that mountain, whatever happened in Galilee with the disciples, the 11 disciples and Jesus, I am sure after that ceremony, some of them would have come back to think about their lives. Today, we have the advantage of hindsight. We have heard all that happened from the passion to the resurrection now and the ascension. And we've been told everything that happened. And a lot of it is physically verifiable. But we come back and we are still doubting a lot of things about the resurrection. Apart from the resurrection, there are a lot of things about our own, our own doctrine. The doctrine of the church and the commandments of God, the message of scripture, that some people are still doubting. And when you doubt, action will not flow. When you doubt, there's going to be some hesitation in action. When you doubt, you're going to be reserved. And that's what we are talking about. We need to go all out for God. You see what happened? Jesus just came and then they were watching. The mother was there. The disciples were there. He went up. They saw this. They saw this. So when we talk of Jesus, there is a historical Jesus. Or let me say there was a historical Jesus. There was Jesus who walked the streets of Galilee. There was a human being, of course also God, whom people saw. But today, people still believe as if this was not true. And unfortunately, some of us. And when once you begin to have these um, unnecessary doubts, you will have hesitations in doing what you're supposed to do. You'll be told, let's go and worship. Could it be true? You'll be told, let's go and, and, and receive baptism. That to wash away your sins and wash away original sin. You'll be like, could it be true? You'll be told, let's go and receive Holy Communion. That is what will give you life. You'll be hesitating. This is what the gospel is saying. And this is what I want us to learn. On this Ascension Thursday, let us learn that we are the children, not just children. Right? We are the friends of God. We are Theophilus. And we are the friends of God. And we should stop doubting. There are some things we should not doubt. And one of the reasons I have said before, one of the reasons we should not doubt is, there is no way you can verify everything about God. God is God. You cannot demystify God. It's not possible. There's no way you can demystify God and understand everything. So many things about God must still remain a mystery. That's why he's God. And all we need to do is, as friends of God, we must believe. Because God cannot deceive us. Believe in the resurrection. Believe in the ascension. Believe in the descent of the Holy Spirit. Believe that Jesus Christ means well for us. Believe that where he is, he's going to send us another paraclete. Believe in him. Because when we believe in him, we will believe in the Father and in the Spirit. All of them will come. Three of them will come and make a dwelling among us. So today, dearly beloved in Christ, once again, I want to wish you a very happy Ascension Thursday. And uh, you know why I'm saying I'm wishing you a happy Ascension Thursday? We are moving gradually and gradually. We are moving close to, we are moving close to Pentecost. All that we are doing now is to make sure that we have the Spirit. And after ascension is Pentecost. So I wish you the best of this time. A few days to come, the Lord Jesus is going to send us the paraclete. Why not pray today in a very special way? Pray. You are a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And this God is going to the Father. God the Son is going to the Father. I want you to pray. I want to propose a point for your prayer. I want you to pray with me that when the Lord Jesus goes there, he would send us not just the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit that would touch us at the point of need. What is my need? Maybe I have health challenges. Maybe I have financial challenges. Maybe I have challenges in my marriage. Maybe my family is torn apart. Maybe things are not working well with me. Not as if everything will be all fine. But the Lord Jesus is going and he says, I'm going to send you another paraclet. Today is ascension. Just like a good child in his child-likeness would send the father who is going to the market or going to town or send the mother going to the market, mommy, buy me something. Let's ask the Lord Jesus in all humility to buy us blessing, to buy us forgiveness, to buy us renewal, to buy us good health, 
to buy us meaningful life, to buy us the different things we need. He's going to the Father. May the Holy Spirit that he will send touch us at the very point of need. This will be your prayer. And you can say this prayer. You know why? You are a friend of God. You are Theophilus. I am Theophilus. Let us pray like people who understand that we are friends of God. Heavenly Father, thank you this day. Thank you for the gift of this day. The day you sent your Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, after his resurrection and um, a few days with his disciples, the day you made possible for him to come back to you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to bring this day to mind as we celebrate Ascension today. We have heard from your readings that we are Theophilus, we are your friends, Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that as you go to the Father and as you get ready to send us the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, may the Spirit that you're sending meet us at the very point of need. You know what we need, you know what we lack, you know what your children know and need and lack. You know all our desires. We hand over everything to you. May the Holy Spirit meet us at this point of need. We are talking to you in all humility, but with, with all confidence as your friends. We are Theophilus, and we are proud to be Theophilus. By the time the gift comes, the gift of the Holy Spirit, may the world see, may the world understand, may the world come to comprehend that we truly are your friends. Lord Jesus, bless us and bless our future. And may these blessings endure with all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, thank you, dearly beloved in Christ. Please, um, as you celebrate Ascension today, don't forget to subscribe. And when you like the channel, please share it with others. And let everybody know that your name is Theophilus. Let everybody know that you are a friend of God. Fanabasi. May God remain our friends in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.